Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be discussing a trade that I took today along with some other price action following the CPI release today. So going back to one of my last videos on the channel discussing the 930 fair value gap and that strategy for 930 New York Open, we had a beautiful setup here on S&P as you can see here. This is the one minute time frame where we opened at 930. See how this line is depicting right here this first down close candle, that's 930 opening price. We come down, create this swing low, and then we come back up, purge that high once more, but look at how no fair value gap is formed there. Then we finally get that displacement that runs the high. Now, do we want to long this? No, we want to be hesitant for longs because we just took out that buy side liquidity there. So the better setup is just to wait and see with the 930 fair value gap strategy if we close below since we've had a form of manipulation and then use that as an inversion to get short and target our internal range sell side liquidity, which is this swing low here. So after this candle right here closes below, your limit order is the low of the 930 fair value gap, which is serving as an inversion. Your stop loss is above mean threshold or above the upper portion of the body of this bearish order block that's residing above that 930 inversion fair value gap. Now, note how we go up to the top of the inversion fair value gap, but we have this bearish immediate rebalance. This is the exact signature that you wanna see in this scenario. If on the third candle right here, right? If we're going back up to the top of the inversion by extension for this specific price action, we're coming into this wick. And this is that immediate rebound signature you wanna see. So we come up into it and look how aggressively we displace away from it. Okay, and then we go right here, boom, you get your internal range liquidity. That's your partial. That can be a model in and of itself over and over and over again. Put the majority of your focus on the internal range liquidity and then take the majority of your position off once we purge that internal range liquidity. Now, as you can see here on the right side, I have labeled problematic for continuation. If we were taking partials here, but you're looking for a move down to this sell side liquidity, the low that was made after the CPI release today, do you want to see this type of reaction off of this order block? No. Especially since we're purging liquidity here, you don't want to see us start to wick and come up and close above that order block. Okay. On top of the order block in and of itself, look at the mean threshold there, this red line. To the tick, we're seeing delivery of support and the body's closing above the order block as well as this bullish fair value gap here. See these blue lines that I have depicting that busy? The bodies are respecting that. So once we see this and continuation, your stop should be at break even. And in this case, you would have got stopped on the runners at break even and you would not have gotten to the terminus for runners. But this model in and of itself, we see over and over and over again with some of the concepts discussed in that 930 fair value gap video, where in this case it was an inversion after buy side liquidity was purged. Okay, now we're gonna look at NASDAQ's 930 fair value gap and how we could have traded it and some of the things that I wanna discuss here, okay? So similarly to the S&P, Right, we have 930 opening price, no displacement, no displacement, and then we get that first fair value gap after 930 open. So this is our 930 fair value gap, and see how right here, once, twice, three, four, five times, we're coming into the fair value gap, and on a closing basis, we're finding support, okay? And then we run the high right here, and we displace and close below the 930 fair value gap, so like the S&P, it's the 930 inversion fair value gap. Now, how is this different, right? Recall with the S&P setup that we just discussed, we got short when price retraced back up into the 930 fair value gap inversion because we hadn't met our target yet, that internal range liquidity. See on NASDAQ here, we displaced aggressively through, and by the time price got back up to that 930 inversion fair value gap, we had already purged that internal range sell side liquidity here, which would have been our target. We're seeing signatures off of a down close candle, which is a bullish order block. And we're also seeing the signatures using S&P to aid our analysis and our potential entry if we're looking for a short on NASDAQ. We're seeing ES have those bullish signatures that we discussed as well that was problematic for a continuation lower. So 
Yes, we have a high, low, higher high here, down close candles, that's a breaker. We have a SIBI, we have the 930 inversion, but we had already purged and we'd seen those bullish signatures from S&P, right? And here on NASDAQ as well. So we don't wanna enter short when we get back up into here because we know it's less likely with the 930 fair value gap model. We're targeting for the majority of our position internal range liquidity. So it's, we know it's less likely that we're gonna come up into here and then go back down and purge this internal range liquidity, right? Because this swing low that we just formed was already utilized to deliver to this order block and run what should have been our initial target if it gave us the opportunity before running it, okay? So the better thing to do in this case, if you recall again from that lesson I have on the channel on the 930 fair value gap, instead of waiting for the inversion short, you wanna wait and see if we close above it and that classifies as our 930 reclaimed fair value gap. Because what do we have above? The buy side liquidity. So see how we come back, close above right here, the 930 fair value gap? Your entry after the close on this next down close candle is at the high here. Your stop loss can be mean threshold. Again, it's not the best RR here, but focus on what price is doing, right? You can put an aggressive stop loss, um, or I should just say a limit order, right? at the opening price of the order block, mean threshold, whatever you wanna do there, whatever you're comfortable with. But then you can just close it if we close back below the 930 fair value gap because we shouldn't do that. And also note this SIBI here that at the same time we're closing back above the reclaimed 930 fair value gap, we're closing above that SIBI and that becomes an inversion. So there's no reason if we're at least going to run this swing high, buy side liquidity, it's labeled here as BSL, there's no reason for us to close back below the reclaimed 930 fair value gap, okay? So instead of forcing the short here, just in terms of identifying the price action, you need to understand that we've already ran this internal range sell side liquidity, and we started to see bullish signatures that was problematic as we already discussed for our continuation to sell side. And now, as you can see, we're looking at a short here on NASDAQ's one minute chart, utilizing the CPI fair value gap. Now, what is the CPI fair value gap, simple. The first inefficiency after that 8.30 CPI news report. So find that inefficiency on your chart. And then as you can see here, I have CPI fair value gap 25%. Take your Fibonacci from the high of the fair value gap to the low, get your quadrants 25, 50, and 75%, and then see how NASDAQ treated that 25% level or the lower quadrant of the CPI fair value gap, not only here and what we're about to discuss, but later on in the session, there was some really nice delivery to this exact level here. So we tap that level. And if you're familiar with some of the concepts I discuss on this channel and how I trade, I'm utilizing the CPI fair value gap 25% level the same way I would a key reference point. So I'm looking for Number one, delivery to the key reference point. Number two, how do we deliver to and around that key reference point? Again, in this case, it's the 25% level of that news fair value gap. And look at what we're doing. We're running all the buy side liquidity here. We left relative equal lows here in the form of sell side liquidity. And the bodies are respecting that level. So if we're respecting the 25% or lower quadrant of that CPI fair value gap, by extension of that logic, what are we doing? We're failing to reach 50% of it. That's a signature in this case, since we're bearish, of weakness, of heaviness. So step one, delivery to the key reference point. Step two, how do we act? In this case, we're looking for respect in terms of resistance. So we don't wanna see bodies close above, right? It's allowed to wick above, but the bodies are respecting it here. Then step three, what occurs? We close below a discount P array, which is what? This busy close below, turns into an inversion. Your sell limit order is at the low of the inversion and look at that delivery there. Close below, right there, virtually zero drawdown, okay? Quick note on this as well. If you look above where you would have got filled right there, see how there's no inefficiency in here, okay? So yes, you wanna give your stop loss room to breathe and put it over the inversion. In this case, since we have this large up close candle, that's your bearish order block. You wanna put it at least above 75% or typically I'll do the high of the body of the order block since we have this large wick here. If it goes up here to the high of the body, typically I'm probably gonna get stopped out anyways, 
okay? And we already delivered to this 25% level, so I don't really wanna see it go above there for that reason, but also, I don't wanna see it fill out the inversion completely because I'm looking for signatures of weakness, all right? Now, what are we gonna target? Those relative equal lows, okay? This is your setup in and of itself, inversion after key reference point right there. We displace lower, we have this little SIBI that's not annotated on the chart. See how we wicked above that after we close below the inversion, right? You can pyramid here or you can just let the, the trade run and kind of just internalizing order flow say, okay, I don't really wanna see a close back above this inversion and definitely above this SIBI, right? Why is this a higher probability inversion though? See how the algorithm initially utilized that BISI to run the high and deliver to 25% of that CPI fair value gap? Once we close back below, that's further confirmation, or I guess you can call it change in the state of delivery, where initially the initial state of delivery was to buy side, to complete a buy side objective. Now we're closing below it to complete a sell side objective, delivering to those relative equal lows. Okay, so this was the short I took today on the S&P 500. And you can see I have labeled smart money handshaking and how I utilize those concepts to aid in my confidence to enter this short position. So first off, range low is right here labeled, range high is right there labeled, and we have range equilibrium. As you can see in this chart I posted right here, this is what I was looking for inside of Discord, okay? 520150 on ES if we continue lower, which is equilibrium of the range, right? Why would we wanna target that? Yes, the continuation target is this range low, that's your terminus, but even if I'm wrong about terminus, the algorithm is gonna to want to move down to equilibrium in and of itself, even if it's gonna reverse and go higher. And I can pay myself there, right? On top of this, look at this swing low, the sell side liquidity, that's right above equilibrium of the range. Now, I'm gonna talk about the setup in terms of the price action here and how we delivered to this target first, and then I'll go through what I wanna discuss with the smart money handshaking. So as you can see here, we have this BISI, okay? We close back below it, and then this inversion, that's our fill right there, to the tick, that immediate rebounce, okay? And then we displace lower. So if we have this immediate rebounce here, where we come up into that wick, what's the rule of thumb? On the next candle, or the following candle, right? So the two candles after that immediate rebound signature, you wanna see some form of displacement. Now, we're on the one minute chart, so it's not gonna be huge displacement, but see how we create this SIBI? That's confirming to you that we are in a sell program at least until we meet some sort of sell side objective. In this case, what do we already discuss? Internal range, sell side liquidity, equilibrium of the range, okay? On top of this, look at how once, twice, three times we try to wick up into that SIBI, bodies close below, displace again, okay? Consequent crunch with the SIBI, failure to get to the high breakaway gap, displace lower, gravitate towards this internal range, sell side liquidity. Now, like I said, terminus was this range low. I'm actually still in this trade at the time of recording. I'm sure you guys know it's been back and forth all day, but the majority of the position came off um, at internal range, sell side liquidity. So now I wanna go back up to this inversion to kind of discuss why this was higher probability. And if you look here at these faint blue lines that are going across my chart, you can see 0 0.06, 0 0.12, 0 0.18, 0.25, et cetera, you can see those. Those are the 16th levels of the large opening range gap we had. To find the 16th levels, I will post them in my Discord if you guys aren't already in there. I think I did already, so you guys should have them, but if you don't have them yet, give me a ping and I'll just send them over to you. But to find the opening range gap as well, you guys know, you just go to regular trading hours, take the close of the previous day to 9.30 open, in this case for today's session, and then you're putting those 16th levels on that gap that we have there, okay? So with Smart Money Handshaking, I've discussed it before on this channel, so I won't go into depth with it here, but essentially as we're digging up higher and we have a lot of this pent up sell side liquidity as we've already discussed, we're closing above 16th levels and dropping to discount, finding support. Closing above 16th levels, dropping below to discount, finding support. Closing above, et cetera, et cetera. Then we come up here and we close above this 16th level. So much, nothing has changed there at that moment. See how we're closing above that 0.375 level, 5225 even right there on the right side of the screen. But what gave me the confidence? 
once we close above here, since we're in a high premium as well, we shouldn't close back below it. We should close above that level, drop into it, and then reach for the next 16th level, then et cetera, and so on, then reach for 50%, right? So the fact that we're closing above and then closing below that inversion, right? We should not have done that. So that makes this inversion of higher significance to me. So on top of everything we already discussed here, this is why this inversion was important to me. So do I use smart money handshaking or opening range gap or 16th levels or eighth levels, quadrants, whatever, in every single one of my trades? No, but it's just something to have in your repertoire. Okay. And when we have a large opening range gap like this, remember we had that CPI report at 830. So the opening range gap isn't formed till 930. So we had a large move before that 930 open. So what else is the algorithm telling you here? Just like every other inefficiency, like we discussed on NASDAQ CPI fair value gap, how it failed to get to 50%. That's the same signature you're looking at here in terms of gauging weakness or heaviness in the market. We're failing to even reach for 50% of that large gap. And then we get this setup like we discussed here. As you can see here, we have our private Discord community, Real Traders Only, where we do daily signals, advanced teachings, pre-market analysis, daily reviews, trade reviews, personalized learning, live tape reading, and much more. We just brought on another longtime friend and amazing, phenomenal trader, Real Trader Paul. He trades Forex, he trades NASDAQ, and he will also be providing his daily signals as well. And he'll do his respective trade reviews, going over his strategy, how it's different than mine, how it relates to mine, and all that. Okay, so if you guys want to join this community, see the link in the description of this video. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video.